last class uh, we have started this uh, states particularly different test required for your irrigation or spillway construction and that is uh, coming under this also in situ permeability it comes under this and single parker double parkers and field rocks your test and geological reports up to this I have discussed and test uh, for collection of undisturbed soil and differential free soil test and if possible plate load test. Test on CNS material cohesive uh, non swelling soils, uh, CNS is cohesive non swelling soils it is required these are the following tests that means uh, mechanical analysis in the mechanical analysis it is sieve analysis and hydrometer analysis. Then Atterberg limits liquid limit and plastic limit and swell pressure test these are the recommendations uh, as per the IS Indian standard 9451-1994 what is the best suited CNS material for that what should be your grain size distribution or mechanical analysis. Then now this is the test for filters one is your CNS material and test for filters generally filters provided where it allow water to pass through the filters and it will also only allow water to flow no passage of no passage of your soil. So, uh, generally this uh, mechanical analysis your sieve analysis hydrometer analysis and gradation curve based on this sieve analysis and hydrometer analysis you have to draw this gradation curve between this percentage finer between this percentage finer versus particle size particle size that is your diameter d. So, you can find it out gradation curve whether it is a uniform well graded or gap graded or may be kind of a what other grade type of soil it is there. So, gradation curve is required for test for means uh, for design requirement of your filters. Then up to this we have covered now need for filter if you look at this filter as for IS Indian standard 9429-1980 transition filters are required between impervious zone of fine grain soil and pervious zone or drains of coarse grain material to prevent migration of soil grain from the impervious zone to pervious zone. That means, filter is a barrier filter is a barrier that means, it allow only water to pass through this, but it will prevent soil from fine grained soil to travel or pass along with the water to your downstream or may be inside this. So, this filter is required basically it will allow only water to flow no soil to flow or pass inside this filter. So, requirement for filters generally for filter requirement voids should not permit the migration of particle from the protected zone that means, whatever voids inside this filter look at this whatever the voids inside this filter it should be such way that it should not allow the migration of fine grain particles or migration of soil particles from the protected zones that means, this voids should be in such a way that it should be less than that the your fine grain soil particle size. If void is more than the fine grain soil particle size what will happen it will allow soil as well as water to pass through the pass through the filters. So, it should be sufficiently more pervious second criteria is it should be sufficiently more pervious than the protected zone to reduce a sharp reduction in hydraulic gradient that means, what will happen the moment hydraulic gradient will build up means the moment hydraulic gradient is there that means, pore water pressure will increase. So, soil loses its strength so effective stress will decrease that means, it should be sufficiently more pervious that means, it will allow immediately water to pass inside this filter. So, that this there is a reduction in hydraulic gradient if I look at this these are the criteria to be used or requirement of a filter d 15 of a filter 
divided by D I 85 of protected soil, protected soil. D 15 is your filter material that means, particle size of the filter material 15 percent of particle size is finer than that of the filter material and D 85 is your 85 percent of particle size should be finer than that, it should be less than 5. Another one is your D 15 of filter divided by D 15 of protected soil should be greater than 4 and less than 20 and D 50 of filter divided by D 50 of protected soil should less than 20. That means, this is this is your first one that means, 85 percent of soil particularly if this is a fine grained soil. If I say this is a fine grained soil, if I plot the soil, if I plot the gradation curve that means, percentage finer versus your say particle diameter in log scale, log scale. Suppose, you are getting a fine grained soil of this fine grained soil. So, suppose say it is starting with 0 0.008 like this 0 0.01 then 0 0.1 then 10 uh, 1 then your 10 then 100. Now, if you look at this most of the particle size most of the particularly fine grain particle size from this curve it is lying between 0 0.008 to 0 0.01 or you can say that 0 point for example, in this case 0 0.008 to 0 0.01 most of the soil particles are lying. If I draw it, it is passing here, it is passing here. That means, it should be designed in such a way that 85 percent of the protected soil should retain. That means, only you allow 15 percent of particle size should pass through this your filter. That means, if this is your 85 percent of your D 85 percent of your particle size retained, that means, suppose say D 85 is coming here, D 85 is coming here. So, that means, it will be around say 0 0.009 or 0 0.001, 0 0.009. If this is the particle size, that means if it is 0 0.009, then D 15 of the filter will be 0 0.009, 0 0.009 into 5. This is your, that means 0 0.045 mm is your D 15. 15 percent of your filter that means, it is passing through uh, finer than that. That means, D 15, 15 percent of your particle size of this uh, filter is around 0 0.045 mm. So, based on this criteria, you have to design what kind of filter you are going to take and what is your first, first and foremost criteria is your fine grained soil. First, you identify your fine grained soil uh, that what is its gradation curve and find it out it is a particle size distribution that means, mechanical analysis, sieve analysis as well as hydrometer analysis. From there you find it out this particle size from this particle size distribution curve find it out the gradation. Once you get the gradation curve then you decide as I explained here then you decide where is your D 85 means of the soil and what is that size and once you take that size that size into multiply by 5 that is your D 15 of your filter. Similarly, D 50 of the filter you can find it out. So, indirectly you are finding out the gradation of your filter, gradation curve of your filter. Once you know the gradation curve of your protected soil, indirectly you are finding out what is your gradation curve or particle size distribution should be inside this filter from this criteria indirectly you are going to find it out. Now, in general what, what should be your thickness of the filter, what is the recommendation of the IS code? Generally for horizontal filter it is 15 to 30 centimeter as per the Indian standard and vertical, uh, vertical filter 
So, it will be 1 to 1.5 meter vertical filter, generally this is your thickness criteria. Now, if you look at this overall, what we have finished this coefficient of permeability and its test, what are the different uh, coefficient of permeability to find it out? The coefficient of permeability you can find it out from the field or as well as in the laboratory. What are the test you are going to find it out? Laboratory you are going to find it out by means of constant head permeability or variable health permeability test. So, this is just indication of this uh, permeability test. So, generally we will go for 3 to 4 test from that whatever the laboratory value you are getting that should be reported as average permeability simulate with your field conditions. Then in field test, in field test I have explained already this particularly pumping borehole method and tracer methods. So, pumping means you will pump, pump the soil, pump the water and find it out how much water drop down in the observer well also bore, bore holes you can find it out what is the um, constant uh, flow inside this borehole draw down or maybe passing it and tracer test you allow some dye to pass through this uh, water. So, that you can find it out how much where it is passing and how much basi basically in the field you are finding out discharge by the time. Then with this field test and laboratory test you will find it out your permeability and I have discussed different examples and also there are different empirical relationship and coefficient of permeability for different sands and how to choose wh where is your coefficient of permeability should be there for different type of soils and what is your range. Then related to coefficient of permeability there are two additional uh, things permeability in vertical direction, permeability in lateral directions that also I have discussed. Then related to the coefficient of permeability what are the different parts to be considered for irrigation projects? One is your pre-construction, pre other is your during construction, third is your post-construction and with these what is your what is what are the different tests you are going to do and another part is your cohesive non-swelling soils and what are the tests and what is the criteria for what is the gradation criteria for cohesive non-swelling soils. Then last one we have finished that is your filter criteria, what should be your filter criteria and what should be your thickness based on that means how the filter criteria will come into picture. It will come into picture from the coefficient of permeability, what should be your coefficient of permeability you want because the main criteria for this filter criteria is your that means you have to reduce your hydraulic gradient, hydraulic gradient so that the development of pore water pressure will be lower down this hydraulic gradient depending upon how much sewage, how much uh, water to pass through this uh, filter. That means, first you will have to decide your coefficient of permeability required. Once you find it out coefficient of permeability, then you can find it out your filter criteria. This is all about your coefficient of permeability to determine the coefficient of permeability in the laboratory as well as in the field. And uh, now we will start next one is your this is interesting one soil stiffness parameter as far as possible we have uh, covered most of the uh, laboratory test and field test some other laboratory and field test we will also discuss later on. So, how to interpret soil stiffness parameter from this test? means soil stiffness parameter is nothing but your E and mu, E is your modulus of elasticity, mu is your Poisson's ratio. How to find it out soil stiffness parameter, how to interpret for your modeling or for analysis. So, general concept and the stiffness of sand or stiffness of if I divide into two parts of the soil, one is your coarse grain, other is your fine grain, coarse grain I write it for sand fine grain I put it as a clay. So, generally it follows this Hooke's law E moduli from triaxial testing, e, e modulus you can find it out from triaxial test, E modulus also you can find it out audiometer testing, audiometer testing is nothing but is your consolidation testing. So, examples on the uh, particularly estimated E will solve the example and stiffnesses of clay that means on drain clay behavior from there how to find it out E, drain clay behavior and examples on the estimation of E. 
this is the things we are going to discuss for both coarse as well as fine grain soil. Now, idealize and uh, real stress and behavior of soil. If you look at this, I put it into three parts of the stress and behavior. One is elastic, linear elastic, another is nonlinear elastic, another is elastic and plastic, elastic and plastic. Now, if you look at this linear elastic means the stress will increase with increase in strain. That means, the stress will increase with increase in strain. As the value of strain you are going to increase, the stress also going to increase in a soil material. That means, this graph will continue it is a like a straight line. That case we are generally say this is a simple case of linear elastic. Now, if I say nonlinear elastic that means, part A, A is your nonlinear elastic if I say that means, some initial part of this nonlinear elastic look at here nonlinear and elastic initial part of the curve stress versus strain it will be behaving as a linear that means, as with increase in stress strain will increase. So, it is going 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 somewhere else it will be linear up to here after certain part of the linearity it will become nonlinear. This part is your nonlinear. After achieving nonlinear, after certain part of your nonlinearity, again it become linear. Again it become linear. So that means nonlinear elastic. That means elasticity is there. Elastic is there, and this elastic curve will be follow linear certain part then it will become nonlinear, then it will follow linear. So, this kind of behavior also we are getting for soils. Another one elastic plastic, elastic plastic means what do you mean by elastic? Let us just think what do you mean by elastic? Elastic uh, if I say Hooke's law elastic E is equal to modulus of elastic, if I say E is equal to stress by strain and if I say it is elastic then what then what will happen if i remove the stress somewhere else as i increase as i apply the load the stress will increase then your strain will increase the moment i release your load or the stress it will bounce back to your original position that is called elastic now nonlinear elastic also there elastoplastic means it will continue as an elastic then it become plastic then it become plastic. That means, if I release it somewhere else this stress here, it will not return back to its original position. It will be somewhere else, it will some plasticity will be there. This is called elastic elastoplastic or elastic plastic, elastic plastic or we can say that elastoplastic. These are the three behavior generally observed or maybe I can classify or idealize real stress and behavior of soil into three category. One is your linear elastic, other is your nonlinear elastic, other is your elastoplastic. Now, based on that various type of elastoplastic behavior, I do not want to go in detail. This will be as in a part of modeling. So, basically we are idealizing how to find it out E moduli for your analysis. So, various type of elastoplastic behavior is your strain hardening this is your strain hardening and B is your perfectly plastic, it will go elastic then it will become like this. So, it is your perfectly plastic, then strain softening, strain hardening means the with this strain it, it will go asymptotically up with this strain and strain softening means after peak it will come down this is your strain softening. Then last part is your combination of A, B and C that means strain hardening, strain softening as well as plastic. If you look at this uh, last part of the curve, it is in it is the stress is increasing linearly with your strain and it will attend a peak. Then with this peak I say that this is my strain hardening and with this after the peak the soil this will decrease and with this decrease I say that this is my strain softening based on the strain value how whether it is increasing or decreasing. Then after certain part of this it will remain constant the strain at that time I say it is perfectly plastic. 
So, this three may be combined together I can write it that also gives your stress and behavior of soil. And uh, so, these are just be because why I am discussing this will be required while finding out E modulli. So, just to know what are the your stress and behavior of soil. So, this is the discussion. Then Hooke's law of elasticity, this this these are all you know all about this. So, this will be E x, E y and uh, epsilon x, epsilon y and epsilon z you can find it out. From there you can find it out g, k and audiometer modulus from this audiometer modulus is nothing but your g shear modulus 2 minus 2 nu divided by 1 minus 1 nu. Now, Hooke's law of isotropic elasticity if you look at this as I said there are two types of moduli you can find it out one is your E linear moduli or E elastic moduli or second moduli E linear first part of the moduli is that means you draw initial part of your curve at straight line you draw a straight line taking initial part of the curve that is your linear draw a tangent taking initial part of your curve what is that from there what is your value of the slope you are getting that is your E initial you can write it modulus of elasticity of initial. This initial value of modulus of elasticity may not be much needed during the analysis of the soil structure interaction problem. We need that is your second moduli we need that is your second moduli if this kind of curve is there how to find it out second moduli this is again the question. So, with your stress versus strain find it out where it is required this is a case of footing this is a case of loading uh, in case of where it is there find it out where is your ultimate lay, uh, load or ultimate stress or permissible stress this point where is your ultimate load or permissible load you can take it that point you mark it this point has been marked as a one point and other point you can find it out that is your other point is your half of your working stress that point you find it out and join is by straight line and slope of that that is nothing but your second modulus that means that second moduli will cover your design part which is covering with your half of your permissible stress to maximum permissible stress or maximum limit between that you can predict what is your stress and behavior. Otherwise another way also you can report that means, if this is a stress strain curve of your nonlinear throughout is there mark it there are different points point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.4, point 0.5. 0.6. So, because this E is required in case of modeling. So, join with this from O 0.1 then join this 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 straight line for each point you find it out E. From this slope that means, along the nonlinearity along the nonlinear part I am getting I am trying to find it out variation of E variation of how the elasticity is varying along the loading profile this can be used for also in your analysis. Now, standard drain triaxial test on sand from there we will have to find it out your E this is a typical curve of your standard drain triaxial test on sand if you look at here that means, this is my peak that means, this is peak means this I am taking as a failure right. Whatever your failure load is there take the 50 percent take your 50 percent of a failure mark the point as I said draw the tangent draw, draw the tangent with this point from origin to here and this is called E 50 this E 50 you can extrapolate volume versus your strain change in volume versus your strain from there where you are getting 
that means you are drawing a tangent from there you can find it out your mu you can find it out mu means where I am getting the E this E can be extrapolated this once you get the E suppose I am getting a E from here I can mark it I can join whatever the slope you are getting that is nothing but your that slope will give your mu value Poisson's ratio value will because it is volume change in volume by your strain. So, based on the E whatever you find it out E that can be extrapolated the point where you are getting the E whether E 50 E initial or maybe E final or E failure that you extrapolate with your volume versus your strain from there you can find it out mu. From here we are getting two parameters one is your E 50 another is your mu 50 mu is nothing but is your Poisson's ratio this is your modulus of elasticity. This is your Poisson's ratio. Once you know mu and E, then you can easily find it out what is the other parameter G C or modulus you can find it out from this correlations. So, G 50 I got it E 50 by 2 by 2 plus nu 50 and mu 50 is nothing but is your one third value what you are getting from there one third value. Standard drain triaxial test on sand these are the uh, people they have given this uh, correlations with this from triaxial test how to find it out E 50 one is your Vermeer and Sachin and NTNU from there for loose or silt sand and dense and clean sand E 50 in terms of effective pressure that is your 100 kPa they find it out in terms of overburden pressure this is your effective and P reference. These are the correlations they have given if you even if you, you do not have you, if you know the what is your sigma x and P reference, P reference is your 100 kPa once you know then you can find it out E 50 this is based on these correlations based on your experimental results. Now next question is if suppose I do not have any triaxial test data I am having only audiometer that means consolidation data can I find it out E and mu yes I can find it out E and mu if I will find it out what value and how I am going to use. Now from this next question is your from audiometer test can I plot stress versus strain? Yes, of course I can plot stress versus strain because each time we are giving a load increment. We know the load, we know the load, we know the area. So, we are getting each time a stress we are applying and by means of dial gauge as I explained earlier by means of dial gauge we are measuring the strain, we are measuring the strain. So, with this help of that I can draw the stress, stress versus strain from audiometer test the diagram of the stress versus strain. Now from there E audiometer is your change in stress by change in strain that is there you can find it out at different points you can find it out E of the your consolidation test from that this is termed as if I am finding out E from audiometer test it has been written E audiometer or E from your consolidation test. Now, from this test on sand based on the labo laboratory test results Jambu 1963 and Vaughan and Seuss 1990 they have given for loose and silty sand and dense and clean sand E audiometer by P reference, P reference is nothing but your 100 kPa. So, 150 by sigma prime, sigma prime y by P reference that means with effective to 100 kPa this sigma 1 prime you can find it out this can be used from for your model remember this sigma 1 prime how we are using this E and mu in case of for particularly analysis if you look at from this experimental results E you are getting with your 100 kPa and sigma y this stress you can vary from 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 up to 100 so that your E also varying, E audiometer also varying for dense and clean sand also E also varying that means a correlation has been given 
in terms of sigma y with in terms of stress E from whatever the audiometer test is there. So, from there you can find it out your particularly E how it is varying your non linearly. Now, by means of Hooke's law E is equal to if I if it has been proven E is equal to particularly if mu is constant particularly that soil E is equal to two third of your audiometer. E audiometer remember that is your modulus of elasticity getting from audiometer test. Now, this modulus of elasticity for the soil it will be two third of your whatever I am getting from your laboratory test. That means, E of soil is equal to two third of E of soil audiometer test you can write it E of soil audiometer test. So, mu generally taken one third from this uh, audiometer test. So, based on that taking it that you can find it out earlier it is for your E audiometer then now E of your soil that is if I take it E, o, e as a two third of E audiometer from there you can find it out E of the soil particularly loose as well as dense sand. So, these are these are the parametric estimation from your laboratory test how it is useful particularly in modeling or analysis that I am just uh, discussing in brief. The major parameter of your stiffness the moment we say that this is for your static case we are not discussing right now dynamic for your for this major soil stiffness is your E and mu E is your modulus of elasticity mu is equal to Poisson's ratio that is required for your analysis. So, it has been proved that also with your as from this uh, audiometer test so, sigma y because in this audiometer test there is no confinement, confinement is lost at the lateral it is lost only stress has been applied in the vertical directions. So, from that it has been found out if it is a confinement if I correlate with your field sigma y is nothing but your two times of sigma x. So, E almost from this it has been found that E is equivalent to your this is nothing but your E 50. That means, if I audiometer test if I do if I plot the stress versus strain whatever the E value from audiometer test I will take it and apply for the modeling for particular soil this is nothing but is your 50 percent of your E. That means, stress corresponding to 50 percent value of E whatever we are getting that gives your E 50. Now, summary on stiffness parameters on sand particularly laboratory based experience. So, that means, if I from laboratory test that is your audiometer test if I make it into summarize E is equal to E 50 and which is nothing but is your two third of E audiometer mu is has been proven as it will be one third based on that for loose E is equal to very simple E is equal to 15 MPa sigma x that means, vertical stress or may be overburden sigma x prime by p reference, p reference in this case is your 100 kPa and also for dense for E has been these are the correlation given based on your summary based on your laboratory based experience and E is nothing but is your E 50 mu is equal to nothing but is your one third. So, this is your loading during unloading about four times stiffer mu is very small. What will happen particularly in audiometer test in consultation test you are getting E versus log P this is up to my loading this is unloading then loading unloading loading and unloading. The moment I unload it the moment I unload it, it is it is that sample has been loaded, then it has been unloaded, then from this point it has been reload. So, it says during unloading it is four times of stiffer and mu is Poisson's ratio is very small during the unloading part. Means, this value you can take as, as uh, from this value you can take it as a design parameter input what will happen during construction also during putting also there that means, it may possible that first you excavate 
then you place your uh, footing that means, this is your time where this is your unloading. Then after placing the footing then once the construction started it will start loading that means, from here to here it will start the loading. So, based on this uh, laboratory test you can consider E should be 4 times steeper during unloading and mu is equal to very very small. So, the though this is not required just in brief means how to decide your moduli for finite element uh, computation. So, from layer 1, layer 2 average value of layer E 50 means suppose you if you see there are uh, there there is an embankment to be constructed and this is my uh, soil deposits clay peat clay and this is your extreme loose deposits sand. So, I put it this is your layer 1 sand deposit is layer 1, 2 is your clay, third is your peat, fourth is your clay, then fifth layer is nothing but is your to be constructed embankment to be constructed. Now, for extremely loose sand as it is extremely loose sand you can take it E 50 with reference to 100 you can find it out 15 MPa. How you are getting 15 MPa for layer 1 you can find it out at this point middle of this. This is an example how to calculate how to put for modeling at the middle of the layer at the middle of layer you find it out what is your vertical stress. So, layer 1 based on the gamma you find it out sigma y is equal to 70 kPa and generally increase in your stress because of your embankment loading delta sigma y is your 50 kPa. So, average of sigma y you can take is your 95 kPa. So, sigma x will be 50 kPa from there you can find it out E 50 is nothing but is your 15 MPa 1500 MPa or 1000 10000 kPa from this average value. Then similarly, if layer 1 is extremely dense sand in case of example 2 that is means of unloading. If you look at this example 1 is your loading, example 2 is your during unloading then you can find it out during unloading. So, how the case of unloading will come into picture? So, maybe I can I can stop it here. So, the next class I will I'll show a little bit I'll, I can cons uh, uh, consider and I can go from laboratory test to field test for how to find it out this E value other part we will discuss.